Thank you very much. Um, yes, my name is Morapula Mashalani from the South African National Space Agency, uh, responsible specifically for disaster management, applications of Earth observation in disaster management. Uh, SANSA is an entity of uh, Department of uh, Science and Innovation, and our mandate is to promote and um, encourage the use of Earth observation technology in a wide range of thematic areas, including disaster management. So to go into the presentation, um, we these are the current applications which uh, we have either a national or a continental uh, product, which is either a, in the form of one indicator or more, uh, which uh, decision makers and disaster management entities can use as uh, information in whatever uh, work which they, which that they do. And then we have products on drought, fires and floods. The fourth one, which I would like to add is land subsidence, uh, land surface deformation, which has the ability to predict where uh, sinkholes are likely to be formed. So uh, uh, looking at the disaster life cycle, we have noticed that earth observation technology can actually assist in both I mean, in all the stages of the disaster in terms of mitigation, preparedness, in response, and also in recovery. So, okay. Okay, so going into the first form of the uh, disaster, we have an indicator which, okay which we use as an indicator for drought. This indicator usually mainly looks at vegetation greenness. The screen that you see there, uh, the black dots shows settlements and the reddish color shows the areas which are extremely dry in terms of vegetation. And this product, its main use is to indicate where there is some form of agricultural drought. And this is in one municipality in Limpopo. And this product we, we incorporate it in uh, the Department of Water and uh, Water Affairs as National Integrated Water Information System. So this is a live platform which they have. And within this platform, we have that vegetation information, which is a supplement to the hydrological uh, variables which they have on the platform. So this also enriches information in terms of accuracy to say which areas are actually experiencing drought. And it can also uh, give you to the level of settlement where I had already indicated in the previous slide. Now, the next one is fires. The fires, we also, this is a capability which we have, where we also do what we call fire investigation reports. And these reports are, are reports which we generate using earth observation. We are able to map the fire scars and we create at the end what we call a fire report, which we give information as to where the fire started, how much of the area got burnt, so on and so forth. So this information is provided through uh, Mr. Vellum Foster at the South African National Space Agency. And also at a continental or worldwide level, we have a system called the Advanced Fire Information System, which the CSIR is championing. So this allows, I mean, it is able to give you live fires all over the continent and the world and uh, you are able to, I mean, you are welcome to go on and explore its work. Now, coming to the floods, flash floods, we have various capabilities. One being mapping of in-situ floods. So the mapping of in-situ floods, this is where we use radar, I mean, synthetic aperture uh, radar technology, where we are able to map floods as they okay. Uh, 
this we have done even in uh, times of alloys dating back. As you can see, there's a, the example which we have there is a 2019 example of the floods which have started in uh, Mozambique going into Zimbabwe as well, the likes of Chimani Mani and other areas in Zimbabwe. And then with this information, we map the floods as they happen and we provide maps as to exactly to the disaster management authorities to show them exactly what is happening on the ground. This is an example of the mapped water ponds in a village during LOS, which shows the areas which were inundated within a particular settlement. So this can give an indication as, as to exactly which settlements are inundated during a particular flooding. This is another example which happened in Durban. Uh, the red uh, lined area, there is an informal settlement which was heavily inundated as well during that time. Now, we thought instead of only having to map disasters, uh, the floods as they happen, it's better if we develop a product which will enable us to kind of predict as to where that uh, flooding is most likely to occur. And this is when we came up with the early warning tool, uh, the flood risk layer, which we generate from the height of uh, the hand product, height above near rest drainage. It's a riverine product. It doesn't include uh, the wetland information, unfortunately. So this we have generated for the whole country. What is its purpose? Its purpose is to show where flooding is likely to happen, a riverine flooding. So this is an example of uh, Pretoria, the Centurion area. Uh, we have a river in Centurion, which uh, I think it's a Henops River. Every time it always gets flooded whenever there is um, there is a heavy rainfall in Houghton. And this uh, product is, ab I mean, is able to predict actually that within that particular river, actually, yes, that is the case. And then this also gives uh, substance to this product to say this product is actually can predict where a particular flooding is uh, most likely to happen. It's not only there, this is also an example from Azel Sprout. This is in Mangaum when uh, I went there to give a training on how this tool can be used. The people on the ground did indicate that actually this area received flooding not so long ago when I was, uh, not long ago before I, I visited the area. The same with Mozambique floods, the Beira area, our product also does predict that the flooding will happen there and it has happened many times. So we don't only do that, we also do what we call disaster, I mean, disaster damage assessment in terms of flooding. And we are able to assess the and quantify the damage which had happened. Unfortunately, we are only limited to the physical damage which we can see. Uh, say for example, a person's house got flooded, but it didn't got washed away. We are not able to tell that, but we can just say this area was, uh, I mean, that house was surrounded by water during when we were mapping uh, the flood as they happened. But we are unable to tell what is uh, in terms of damage within that particular household. Uh, this is an example of Masisi, a village in Limpopo, where a river, I mean, a, a, a bridge was washed away. And then using this earth observation, earth observation technology, we're able to quantify that. Unfortunately, up to this date, that area has been fixed. Uh, in Durban as well, the same happened. The red area, you can see, it shows that that uh, the, ro the road there, uh, it received a lot of mud, and they could, that is the potential for infrastructure damage right there. We don't only do that, we also do uh, human capital development and we also do disaster risk awareness as well in, in, in partnership largely with NDMC, with uh, district uh, municipalities and with also national departments as well. And we also provide training. So it's awareness, risk awareness sessions and also it's um, 
training as well as to how this product can be used by the professionals and the general public. Uh, with that, I think this is my last slide. Thank you very much.